So welcome to London Learning Lean. Uh, next week we've got David Angdinato who's going to tell us about his work on elliptic curves. Oh, I have a nice echo today. But this week it's Pierre Alexandre Bazan who's going to tell us about structured finitely generated modules over a PID. Okay. So today I'm talking about the structure term of finitely generated module over PID. So first here the statement that I managed to put in there. So you have a PID, you have a finitely generated model. Okay, so the latter type uh, a universe technicality, which uh, in the the model uh, needs to be a finitely generated type. And so what I managed to put here is so uh, is that the module is isomorphic to some uh, free model, free finite generated model, uh, times a direct sum of uh, quotient by prime power. Uh, by by span of well, prime power. So. And so, well, it's the the statement is written as a non-empty isomorphism because well, isomorphism is an object. The non-empty makes it uh, a product position saying it exists an isomorphism and so then I can existentially quantify by uh, all the size of the model and not the and the prime number of the so uh, the, the the statement doesn't tell anything about uh, unity so unity actually the n and the and the pi should be unique but the the, the iota of course can change but uh, here I've not proved anything in Lean about uh, Unity. Well, uh, also the isomorphism could be could be probably uh, organized as, as a single directum, like could putting this as as terms with a uh, over zero typically. But uh, I've not done this so currently. It's, uh, and this term which separates the free model and the torsion part. So. Uh, how, do, how do I put the statement? Well, it's actually in, in, in three parts. So first, the case of uh, torsion free model. So this part was already on MATLAB, in fact. So we already on MATLAB have a, have a theorem that given the torsion free model, so that uh, the zero as part of the condition here, which is this torsion G. If I take uh, the, uh, a scalar and the vector, it doesn't make zero or less than zero. And which gives us a basis which, by definition, is a uh, isomorphism between the, with a free model, uh, free model index of a Does that say sigma? Uh, yeah, yeah, because it's a it's an isomorphism. So it's uh, it's not a non-empty isomorphism. The basis is an isomorphism. So so it's a sigma and not uh, an exist. Yes, yeah, so this is for the torsion free part. And uh, for the torsion part, so this is a case. So, well, I have here an hypothesis of a torsion model, which means uh, for every x and m, there is a, a non zero. So, a actually non zero division is of a as as a domain, it's the same thing. So, that's a uh, x is zero. And uh, given this condition, so this this one is over PD. Well, uh, this time I have the isomorphism between uh, just a direct sum of uh, question. So this is a statement over PID. I think it could be generalizable to the Dedekind domain. So in which case, it's the, that this uh, span we would have the the power of a prime ideal. Uh, but I've not done this yet. Okay, so this is for torsion model, this is for torsion free model. And now to get the result for a general model, what we need to do is uh, to decompose an, a module N between its torsion, its torsion sub module and uh, the quotient by its torsion sub module, which is a uh, torsion free. But uh, to have the right to do this, we need to prove the sequence, the exact sequence here is split. 
And so the, the reason why it's split, it's actually because uh, this is a free model. And, uh, and so, or is that second split? So this is what it gives in Lin. So we just first, well, we just, we first invoke maternity to show the Tarshan model is also finitely generated. And uh, well, the question is finitely generated. This is just because, well, we have a selection from a finitely generated model. So, first we get uh, the, the decomposition. So, this is actually this part which comes from the torsion model, and this part which comes from the torsion model. And uh, here we actually use the projectively distinct property of the, the the identity of the free module is protective with to give that the splitting and then we can approve and then we can obtain this one. And so actually the part that uh, requires this weird uh, universe technicality is the productive uh, listing property which uh, which actually is uh, only done uh, when the module is of, uh, is a higher universe than the ring. Okay, so, <laughs> so th this is for this is for the final part, and so now uh, all we have to do is to prove the uh, is to prove the case of torsion of torsion some of torsion model. So we have a uh, this new goal. So now we have uh, we still have a PID. We still have a uh, now finally generated torsion model, and uh, we want to show. So again, we have this momentum uh, isomorphism thing. That uh, this time it's just a direct sum of uh, some question of R uh, by uh, R power. So here again, the, there's no question of unicity here, and this part could uh, probably be generalized to the second domain with. Uh, so, yeah, and also the, the actually we end up in the interview in the type of drawing. No, but that's a technicality because it's a different type of code that has a So, and to, to prove this, well, uh, there is two parts of this. So first, we we show that M and also uh, and also in bit uh, not so M this time this time there's no more the the universe form is on. So so we have two parts in this. So first, uh, we will show a torsion model is uh, is actually we actually have an, an internal direction to its uh, torsion by empower. So, so this is a uh, just the module, the, the submodule of uh, all elements that are generated by its process for empower, and so now. Once we will have this, and all we need to do is that it's some of it's some of the internal item. I just have to split to to prove it's uh, again isomorphic to a direct sum of this time uh, of again question of question by point power, but this time the prime is known as it's just uh, well now I have a point power torsion module, so that means that. So interestingly, here we have a three different notion of torsion that appear here. <laughs> so we have the general distortion, which is uh, just uh, any 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 element of M is annihilated by uh, by by a non-zero. Uh, here we have torsion that which is a uh, by a specific element. And here we have this uh, torsion angle is 
which is uh, by some grandpa. And actually, if we wanted to do it to a Dedekind kind domain, of we would need an even more complicated notion of torsion. As this well as this type, which we would need to consider a model which is uh, where, where an element is annihilated by some power of an element of the idea. Uh, yeah. No, uh, uh, by. No, 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 but that, that's weird because we, we want to be annihilated by all the ideal, uh, by, by some power. For any, I think it's for any element of the ideal. Uh, we want uh, the element of n type to be annihilated by some power of it. So there's, there's actually both an, an existential and an, an, an universal. So thankfully, yeah, on the PID, we don't have to deal with this. So for the first part, the internal direction. So what we actually do is uh, we prove a modern lemma, which is a, we actually consider a, a list of pairwise co prime uh, numbers in, uh, in R. And then uh, a module we take it that is a uh, torsion by the product of this number. And it, it, this case uh, will show it's uh, an internal direction of well, the torsion by each of the co point numbers. So I should uh, precise here that uh, co prime is defined by uh, the, the existence of. Uh, in a combination which is one so so with ideal the equivalent would be just the the, the span of the union which would be the full the following uh, so this is actually a strong condition when we are not in a in a PID. so for example if we take a, the polynomial in two variables we have a, we have x and y we have it's nothing else in common but that are not common and so actually uh, this is a strong condition, which means in this lemma, we don't actually need the uh, PID. We, we have no hypothesis on R, and we we'll need the PID only to actually apply it to prime powers. Okay. So, first uh, this lemma. So, how do we prove we have an internal direction? So, an internal direction, what it means if uh, is a uh, Right, so we have the, the 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 natural map between the direction of this module and the M, which is just the addition, and well, uh, the the statement is actually that it's bijective, and it's actually equivalent to a uh, to two condition which will correspond to injectivity and surjectivity. So first, uh, well, the surjectivity, which is just the the span of the of all the torsion sub module is the total model, or in the in a general case, uh, just the torsion by the product. It's actually, but as we take a model that is torsion by the product, it's uh, it will be the full model. And the composition by and the other condition is that it's uh, independent. So at independent means it. If I take one of the PI constant model, it will be a uh, distant from the supremum of the uh, other. So obviously, distant. Yeah, we don't mean distant as such. We mean distant time as model, which means the uh, the intersection is the bottom, so zero. <laughs> and uh, what's interesting is uh, that uh, actually both. Uh, most parts it's for S so it's quite a miracle that this works well and uh, we get everything working. So the first part of uh, of independence. So to to prove that the torsion boundary are independent, well, I take X, uh, which is a uh, uh, torsion torsion by PI and in the supremum of all the torsion. And the idea to prove it's zero, it will be to prove that multiplied by one is zero because we already know that, uh, well, multiplied by PI is zero, obviously. 
and multiplied by the products of all the others is zero because, uh, well, that's actually, if it's in the supremum, all, all, all of this uh, torsion model are included in the torsion by the product. And so this is included in the uh, torsion by the product. And actually, uh, what happens is a pairwise coprimus uh, gives coprimus with the with the products. So, so how does this work? Well, we just have our relation uh, like uh, pi of time constant plus pj time a constant equals zero, and we just do the products of all of them for for all j, and this gives the a multiple of pi and uh, uh, and uh, uh, and the products of all the other pj and so this gives us a coprimus relation with the product and using this coprimus relation we get uh, we get this one uh, as x equals zero so this is for the independent path and now for for the supremum well, we want to prove it's equal to the to the torsion by the product. So as I as I have already said, this is a this is included in the product. This is a, a easy part, the, the easy part, but the, not the part we're interested in actually. Yeah. And so to prove uh, the torsion by either product is included in the torsion in the in the form of torsion. Uh, the idea that we have is when x is in the uh, torsion by the product, well, I multiply by the product with one term missing. And obviously, when I have this, I just multiply it by the missing term, and this, it gives me the full product time x, so it's zero. So this means the product with, uh, with one term missing time x is in the torsion by I, uh, the missing term. And so all I need to do is to find a linear combination of this uh, of this product that makes one. And actually we can even see it's uh, it's really what we need to do if we take for example uh, L over the product that, that L over the L over the full product of the PI uh, we and see it's really the only way to have this because then we have one in the torsion by the product and uh, the in, in the torsion by one uh, number are exactly the, the product and uh, what's interesting is this condition of uh, existence of a sum uh, of the uh, of a linear combination of the product that is equal to one it's actually uh, equivalent to uh, the pairwise coprimus condition. So, uh, so it's equivalent, uh, apart from the technicality in case of the empty, <laughs> there's the, the, the technicality when, uh, <laughs> when it's empty because well, then you can't have a sum equal to one, but actually uh, you realize that, and you only need a sum which is equal to one module of the product, so you're already torsion by the product. But the product is one in this case, so you still have a, a sum equal to one uh, module of the product. So this is the technicality for the empty set, but otherwise if it's not empty, we need uh, a, a linear combination which is equal to one. And so how does this work? Well, uh, actually the, the, the intention as of why this is true. So to get the this uh, linear combination, we just do a product of all the component relation for all i and j uh, distinct, and uh, if the term that will give us, well, uh, the all these terms will have at most one of the pi's uh, missing because if we have have pi and pj missing in the term resulting of the development of the product, it means we take we took no term from pi plus pj. <laughs> So this is actually why this is true. But well, uh, actually in Lean, uh, we do it by induction. So actually we, this is 
that we do is we first have the the the, the first lemma that we use that I used earlier that gives the compliance of on one of one term with the product doing only the induction by doing the product and then do, using this we can actually do an induction uh, to prove uh, to, to to prove the generic of the of a, to get a linear recommendation of all product but actually that uh, that really is uh, ju just uh, another way to reformulate the I do the product of <laughs> everything. Okay. And uh, in the other direction, well, that just uh, I just need to regroup sometimes. So when I have this uh, in a combination equal to one, well, I can regroup sometimes always to have a, a multiple of pi and a multiple of pj equal to one. So uh, this part is actually. I've actually proved it both on the uh, on the case of prime numbers and of the case on, of ideal. So well, here I show uh, the proof in name. So what is should be uh, yeah this one. So this one is with the uh, prime number. With, uh, th this actually gives the. Uh, Quite a long proof because I have to do a bunch of manipulation uh, with all these uh, products with an, with one term missing and adding a term and uh, and it's this, very uh, messy to do this yeah that's very messy and we have that we, and I actually the is, and it's actually quite different when you use uh, numbers and when you use ideals because when you use uh, when you use numbers. You you quantify of a, a mu that goes to a and that are just um, and, and you are multiplying by uh, the product and you're quantifying of the multiplication by the product, but uh, when you do it with ideals, you are actually quantifying uh, of uh, elements of the ideals, so you would have here just a mu i, which is uh, in the ideal, and so. We, and so you actually have to do stuff uh, with proving the mu i is to move it from an ideal to a bigger ideal when you get at the term. And, and, uh, and so you have to play with doing the sums of the mu i with a proof of it's on the good ideal. So it's another it's another kind of question. And so well, <laughs> so this is actually quite a massive. But uh, also, so, so, so far, this is the only part I've generalized to ideals. Okay. So, what's the statement for ideals? Uh, it's something like, uh, well, there's mu, uh, the mu that's a family. So, from, uh, well, I is this. It's, so, it's like uh, mu, it's just uh, in the, something like, the i to uh for, for its i of in uh, big i an element of uh, the ideal the product of the ideal of uh, well actually i could uh, <laughs> can maybe show it uh, but it's the big oh well no i have a not a hard time showing it because i need to go to another branch oh, don't worry Uh, okay, so ah, uh, well, there I mean, oh well, I'm not. Uh, ah, uh, no, it's not this point. Sorry, but this point. And here, uh, yep, so, so, so the, the statement, uh, the statement of my deal. So, just, uh, uh -huh. Oh well, yeah, yeah, yes, yeah, uh, that's true. It's just uh, it's just uh, defined of the the span is uh, is top. So the 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 mu doesn't appear explicitly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then it's uh, just uh, well. So the, the 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 first thing I do is making it appear to this uh, nice and so this way I've made the mu appear and. Uh, 
And so this way I have this mu, which is the uh, elements of the ideals, and so uh, and so massive stuff with uh, with all the mu i with the placeholder, and then I prove uh, it's on the ideal I want it to be on. So this is actually how the proof uh, with ideal looks like. Okay. So this was for my for this lemma about uh, pairwise coprominess. And so is me, and then I can just use it to prove uh, that the supremum of torsion so is the torsion by the product. And so from there, I get uh, the the lemma here of an, an internal direction uh, in the case of periscope prime number. And uh, actually, now what I need to do to the case of a finitely generated model of our PID. Well, this time I go to VS code again. So it's back to this one. And this is uh, this is actually on uh, yep this one no it uh, I want it to do that yep so here it is so it it it, it actually makes uh, quite a long proof to to go to the from the coprime number case to the prime case as I as I first have to well uh, split the I, I need to take a generating family of M and this way I know uh, each of these uh, elements of M are torsion by some uh, by some number and so from there I have to uh, to actually uh, take uh, all the primes of all the decomposition of these numbers, and this gives me this gives me a a, a finite set of prime power, which uh, such so that uh, m is actually torsion by uh, this the product of this prime power, and so well, actually the, I have the, the messy stuff going with the associators, also because the primes are always defined. Uh, with the difference of units, so there's, there's a bunch of uh, going with the associate. And they actually have to define uh, all my, uh, <laughs> this is actually just to define the prime numbers and, uh, and the exponents and to prove that they have prime numbers. And then actually I have play, uh, and well, this is the, well, prime power co-prime. And then I uh, apply the, to my torsion as I do lemma, and then I, uh, I can conclude from there to prove that uh, M. <laughs> so actually defining the, properly defining the primes uh, that uh, make it all, can be quite missing. Then you should stick to ideals. Yeah, yeah, actually with ideals, uh, this part would probably be easier. Yeah. Because, uh, you don't have this uh, this uh, different by a unit uh, problem when you're working with ideals, so this could possibly be easier. Okay, so 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 this part is, and so now uh, now we have this internal exam. So this means the the m is a uh, is a metric to the direct sum of uh, its uh, torsion module. We Move to the structure of prime power power torsion. So this is the part that would actually be harder with ideals. <laughs> so the, the, the other one would probably be easier with ideals, but this one would be much harder <laughs> because already you have this this torsion torsion which should be quite messy when you start with ideal. So we suppose uh, this time, with this time we have a fixed prime number p, and we have uh, the, that m is a uh, is p, p infinity torsion 
And so uh, this is actually the part that connects uh, M to talk to quotients of L, because uh, until now, when we did the internal direction, we were still manipulating some model of M. And this time, we we're actually doing a, a structure term because we basically took a quotient of L. So here again, I opted with a, to, to, to a non unique uh, representation because some of this quotient might be zero. So this is actually non unique. Because uh, uh, because well, I as I first thought by taking a generating family, it may be too large, so, so you need to have some new. So first, the base case. So first, uh, we can uh, the the, the first term is we classify the model generated by one element <laughs> because uh, well, a model generated by one element is a is a quotient of R. So this is just uh, if uh, if I take the the span of x, well it's uh, it's naturally isomorphic to uh, a quotient by the by the torsion ideal of x actually. And what's interesting is uh, the torsion ideal of x. Well, when if when you are in a p infinity torsion model, uh, the torsion ideal is always a power of p basically. And there are no other stuff uh, going on, so that's very important. What is the torsion model? So, so, and so now, uh, now that we classified the model generated, the the p infinity torsion model generated by one element, we can move to the case of a finite number of elements by induction. So what we have is we have a finite generating family. Of m of size uh, d plus one, and so uh, what we want actually is to have this exact sequence split because well uh, this is a uh, this is uh, generated by one element, and so this is a quotient of r. Uh, this is actually generated by g elements because uh, well I have s. My finite generating family, I, I push it uh, as a because zero, so I can drop it. And so now I have the elements uh, generating this. And so I can uh, apply my induction hypothesis to have it as the direct sum of uh, the quotient of R. And so to have M as the product of these two parts, I need to split the exact sequence. And for this, uh, what I need to what I need to is to take uh, SJ to be of uh, of maximal uh, order, so that that's if the, so the order is just uh, the smallest answer so that uh, p to the n time uh, SJ equal to zero. I take it maximal, uh, and well, this means this automatically means so if I call n this order, this automatically means m is p n torsion is p to the n torsion. As well, all the all the SI then are are p to the n torsion, and this uh, as they're generating the module or m is p to the n torsion. So as they is very maximal in all m, just not not just in the basis, not just in the generating family. Okay. So well, so uh, as we apply this uh, the induction this hypothesis on this thing. Uh, the induction will be generalizing M actually, <laughs> and also uh, we, we we can, uh, and also it should be noted that uh, S is not preserved by the free splitting obviously because uh, then it would be if I take uh, if I take any S this would be a, uh, a generating family which corresponds to the direct sum which is obviously false, so and this is uh, and the moment. Well, we lose the information of S is when we do the splitting because if I take a SI here, it's an A, but it won't send, be sent back to SI. So, actually, now to prove uh, this is splitting, well, uh, the first thing I do is I literally forget S because uh, what I'm interested in is that uh, this part is, as I said, a direct sum. And I use the structure of direction to 
to build the splitting. It's not, uh, not based on S, which we know nothing about basically. So now that I have the action, what I need to do to split is, well, uh, just, uh, it's, I just need to find the verification for, for each part uh, to M. And so the way to do this, what it basically mean? It just, well, I take the one of, uh, well, it, it's of the one of the two parts. So I actually have this F, which is, so, so here Z is, would be SJ. Uh, here I have F, which is just a component of this direction uh, that go to, uh, well, uh, the whole direction, which is M quotient uh, it by uh, Z. And what I need to do is to find the next, which would be uh, the image of one. And the hypothesis I need of X is that, well, it's a splitting. So when I need to, when I push back X, it should give me F1. And also obviously I need X uh, to be P to the K torsion because when it's coming from uh, L over F to, it's coming up from L over F times P to the K. So if I, if I want to define the, a function going to M, I need the, my, my one to be sent to a P to the K torsion element. P order, what's this P order HMZ? Uh, this P order HMZ uh, is uh, what I called an area. I am, is it, this is a hypothesis actually telling that uh, SA is of maximal pi order. So this is, uh, so as I is dead. And as I said, uh, M will be, if, if this, this uh, will be P to the N torsion where N is the small, is the p order so the smallest uh, the smallest number so that p to the n time uh, times z equals zero actually it's it's sufficient to cancel all m so this is the hypothesis of maximality of the, this is the hypothesis of maximality of the of z and so how do i prove how do i prove this lemma well, uh, what happens if, well, I, I, I first take uh, just uh, some, someone what is some element of M that is projected to F1 by the caution. So this is F1 dot sum. So what I knew, what I knew about this, uh, this F1 dot sum is that uh, multiplied by P to the K, it is a, uh, in AZ, because well, when I push it uh, to the quotient, I get uh, I get F1, and F1 is uh, is P to the K torsion as the F is from uh, at the uh, quotient by F and P to the K. And so this is what I know. But now instead of this, what I want is the P to the K and the, the X I set to be zero actually. And so for this, well, what I need exactly is an A, uh, well, the, my X would be of this form necessarily as it's, uh, as when pushed to, uh, to Z, it should be the same thing as, uh, as F on the top. And so what I need is uh, actually to P to the K to, by multiplied by AZ uh, to be equal to P to the K multiplied by F1. Um, so that uh, P to the K multiplied by X is zero. And so basically what I need uh, is in fact some case of uh, lifting lemma. So I have this X, which is uh, F on the sum. I, uh, I know that uh, multiplied by P to the K, it's uh, in uh, as that well, now it's called Y, uh, in, the, in the sublimate it's called Y, uh, it's applied to that. And, uh, and from there, I want actually uh, A, uh, what I want is X to be um, 
is this uh, Peter the key time x to be a multiple to be a multiple of p to the k but in ly so i i need to, it to be a to be p to the k times something if in ly well i just know it is in ly after multiplication so and how to prove the lifting lemma so this will actually be the moment uh, where we use that uh, y is maximal that uh, had that hypothesis that we still haven't, haven't used. So what we do is, well, uh, so I, I say I call the, the P order of Y uh, N. And so what we know is that uh, L Y is, well, is isomorphic to uh, the quotient uh, by, by L to the N as uh, Y is of P order exactly N. And now, uh, p to the k times x, as m is uh, p to the n torsion, uh, p to the k times x is p to the n minus k torsion. Because if I multiply by p to the n minus k, a, I get p to the n times x, which is zero in m. And uh, what, what's interesting is, well, p, p to the n minus k torsion is, uh, is actually a sub model independent property contrary to multiply. L of p to the k, but we know uh, the p to the k, e n minus k element in L y are exactly the multiple of p to the k, because well we explicitly know L y, and that's why we use that L y is exactly of atom p to the n, and so that's how we actually have this uh, lifting lemma which requires the the maximality. So. Maybe I could uh, switch to lean on this one to show how we do. Oh, yeah, so, so I have the first lemma which uh, states that uh, that the, the torsion ideals are exactly uh, powers of P. Because uh, I, I use it, uh, I use it right in to make the equivalent with the quotient. And then I have this uh, this lifting lemma. Uh, I have this lifting lemma. What is uh, the the other case was where k is greater than n, which is uh, uninteresting. But uh, also, so it's a parity as well. It's just zero equal zero in this case, so it's uninteresting. And then uh, what I actually do is well define the Define the isomorphism between uh, r times uh, p to the n, except I I want it like this because I I need to I will need to use that p to the n it's p to the n minus k times p to the k, and I can't actually I can't easily rewrite uh, I get I, I can't easily rewrite when I'm in an isomorphism uh, this is stuff I can't rewrite so I have to prepare it. Uh, yeah, yeah, this is natural subtraction, which is where there is, I had to split the uninteresting case where k is uh, greater than n. But I have to, I have to prepare it uh, using the, and well, now what do I prove? If I prove that, uh, I prove that p to the k times x. Oh, yeah, it is. This is actually first. Uh, so, so I should do it. Um, so, but that's actually. Well, it, it, I'm using it's p to the n minus k torsion to prove it's uh, multiply p to the k in uh, ry. So I have a. Uh, I have a problem that it's a tell uh, in uh, I, 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 actually got me to to write uh, a problem it's somewhere it's uh, uh, 
No, de la formation. Yeah, I have this, I have this one lemma, uh, which is uh, on R of uh, n times AB, uh, the A torsion is the multiple of B, <laughs> which is actually what I'm using here. And so that's how we prove this uh, lifting lemma. So now we have this uh, lifting lemma that gives us the, the way I construct this, the splitting. And actually, uh, well, whoops. The presentation. So, oh, well. And so actually, uh, then I had to write the, 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 the isomorphism between, uh, between M and the direct term with uh, one additional term. And uh, this actually gave uh, quite ugly thing. So this is the, 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 this is the isomorphism I had to write. And this gives a, a, a quite ugly, ugly thing. Because uh, why is it this ugly? Well, we, I, I can't choose the pointwise definition because then I have to prove it's linear and I don't want to do this. So I have to work abstractly with linear occurrence. So that's what you know. And uh, the cat mod for linear equivalence is uh, not available because uh, well, the, the technicality that we want cat, cat mod to work uh, with uh, when manipulating equivalence with structure. So I have to, to write some bunch, so, a bunch of things about, with, uh, with a bunch of transitivity. <laughs> and, uh, and yeah, and is it I have to manipulate direct subjects? It's not easy because I. Well, I first had to say this direction with the plus one term is the same thing as the, the first term times the direct term. And then I have to make the equivalence of each part with the with the RX. And so that's why it's, it gives a quite big thing actually with uh, the split the, the material that tells me to use the split exact sequence and the, the direct term. Uh, in the advantage to a direct sum, which, uh, which is actually uh, some stuff I had to, uh, I had to write to the, the direct sum, uh, the manipulation of direct sum and as in terms of what the not implemented to this stuff I had to write as well. And so then when I have a, uh, once I've done people at uh I, I then move to torsion mode, to, to the general case of a torsion model. And actually this, uh, this gives, uh, this actually gives quite a long thing for something which is just a uh, regrouping dilemma. As, uh, as all I need to do is just, uh, well, taking the internal direct sum. Uh, so this is a uh, splitting. So, yep. So this actually, we, yes, the, the internal direct term is actually what gives me the, the type theory thing. Uh, uh, well, well, no, no, the data in type theory is because I took uh, a basis uh, at the beginning. I took a generating family to give it, to get all the primes, and, uh, and the generating family is on the same type of as uh, M, obviously. As uh, well, no, M? Wait, no, that's weird. <laughs> uh, And, and so I, then I take uh, each of the prime power torsion. I, well, I go, again have to use materiality for two forms that are alternately generated. <laughs> and, then, and then I can uh, show the isomorphic to a direct sum. And so then I have a direct sum of direct sum. And so I have to regroup it to a direct sum. So this is again a lemma I had to, I had to write because uh, we had not much stuff about manipulation of the rectum. And so with all of the done, this is the with, with the general structure of torsion model and with what I said at the beginning, I finally managed to prove the the full structure term of finitely generated model of our PID. <laughs> well uh, it's uh, not just pushed in my thing, the the follow test is uh, still uh, in progress because well, I, I still have to do uh, to see uh, what I want to generalize so they can do it. I still have to. I don't know when, when will it be pushed. 
And so, that's it. Thank you very much.